All right, now let's look at how we can use the ECDSA algorithm to sign a piece of data, right? We're gonna have our original data, we're gonna stamp it or salt it, and then we're gonna take that and we're gonna put a signature against it um, via a private key. And then we're gonna end up with this data and the signature that eventually we wanna send over to the node. And then the idea is that when the node gets it, it should be able to identify who signed it. That, that This is really how it's gonna end up working. But let's just see if we can get signatures working and, and signature validation working now. All right, so I get that little run function that we've been kind of playing it. Maybe what I'm gonna do is just call this the hash, right? That's our hash. Go back to run here so we can just continue to play and I don't wanna lose the, the work. Return nil. Okay, and I'm gonna go into the original project again in our signature package and you're gonna see that there's this sign function. It actually comes right after the the hash function. So I'm gonna bring that in now too. And I'm gonna break this down a little bit at a time. If you notice, it takes two things. It takes the value that we wanna sign, and then it asks for a private key that we can use to um, do the signature. And then it returns essentially the signature in this VRS format that is, uh, We'll talk about that when it comes up, um, and or an error. And you can see here that I'm actually naming the return arguments, which I never do. But I'm doing this here because we're basically returning four values. And we need to know what the order of that signature is coming back in because they're all big ints. So I'm using it as documentation to say, you're going to get VR and S uh, values from the signature and then the error. OK. Now. In order to make the call, however, we are gonna need a private key. And I've already laid down on disk a bunch of private keys here that we're gonna be using under Zblock. But I think for a little testing, uh, we could just generate a, a private key on the fly and just use that even though we'll, we'll kind of burn through them. If I go to my signature test, my guess is, there it is, um, this takes a hex key, ah, nice. That way we can use the same sort of key in our little scratch program. So what I'm gonna do here, now look, let me just show you that I've got these private keys. They're not in a key file where you should be doing this the right way in a key file that's password protected and the crypto uh, APIs know how to take your password and, and do all of that. These are complete private keys, ECDSA private keys that are completely unprotected. <laughs> you see how small they are. Uh, again, in, a, in any sort of real project or on disk, right, you've got them in a, in a key file. So in other projects that I work on, for Ethereum specifically, uh, I would never do this, right? I'd, I'd use a key, but I just wanted to show you what these private keys look like. So we have that. And so if I just go back to my test here, what we can do is a couple things here, right? Um, let me just take these two constants for now in our scratch program, scratch program, scratch, scratch, scratch. Even I can just keep that in a, in a group. We'll talk about this in a second. So that's gonna be the private key that we use. And you'll see how we got that from address from the private key um, in a second here. But with that private key, right now there is a crypto function called hex2 ECDSA, which parses the private key and gives us back an ECDSA private key. So I'm just gonna pull that in from the test function into our Scratch app that we're gonna be building. All right. Um, and then here I'll just return an error for now. Okay, let's get back to our signature package. So we've got the private key based on this private key that I'm hard coding in there. Again, you wouldn't do it this way. There'd be some sort of uh, key file or another way of, of securely bringing that key in. Okay, so we have a private key. We have any sort of value that we're gonna want. If I go back to the Scratch program, we can use this again, couldn't we? 
right? We have that V, and then the idea is signature dot sign V with our private key. That's the idea. That's what we're trying to get to. And that's going to return, again, our VRS. You'll see this in a second. VRS error. And we're going to play with the signature that eventually. Now, it's going to use V there. So what I'm going to just do is call this the value, All right. the value that we're going to sign. That way, there's no sort of issues there. So that's the value we're going to sign. There's our private key. We're going to get back the signature, and we'll do more with it in a second. But let's go now and, and, and study this sign function that we've got here. OK. So maybe not so, uh, maybe this is obvious right here. But the idea now is what? Here's some data. This is a transaction that we want to sign. It looks like this. And what we're going to do is take that value, stamp it, right? We're going to take the value, turn it into bytes, create a stamp based on the length of bytes that we just produced, and then use this hashing algorithm to join it all together to get back the 32-byte the hash. And so when stamp returns, we now have 32 bytes of data that we're going to sign that also has our Arden stamp in it. Now, the crypto package has a sign function. The sign function takes that slice of bytes that we want to generate a signature against. That's the stamped data. And then that private key that we passed in. And that returns back the slice of bytes and an error. Now, that slice of bytes ends up being the, the, the signature. And if you read this comment closely enough, see if I can get back to it, there it is. It produces a signature of R, S, and V. In fact, it's a, it's a slice of bytes, 65 bytes to be exact. The R value is 32 bytes, the S value is 32 bytes, and the V value is one byte. Now, at a super duper duper super duper high level, okay, the way this algorithm works is it, what it's doing is it's generating a graph and it's picking two points on that graph. R is one point and S is the other point. And those points, uh, one of those two points are used by the algorithm underneath to generate the signature. The V value um, is telling the algorithm for efficiency which one it should use in the future when it's doing anything with this signature. Zero would mean essentially use R one would mean use S, all right? You don't need that V, but um, Ethereum has it in all this just for efficiency. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to talk about. If you want to go really deep into ECDSA signatures and, the, and that signature RSV, go on Google and start looking it up. The math gets pretty crazy. All we have to know is we have a signature. It's represented in three parts, R, S, and V. We get it back in a, an initial slice of bytes. The first 32 bytes is R. The next 32 bytes is S. The next byte is V. And there are some APIs in the crypto package in Ethereum that want the signature in a slice. And there's a, other APIs that want the um, RSV format. And when I looked through the Ethereum code base, they tend to store the signature in the RSV format, not as the slice. So. That's kind of why you're seeing some of this here. Um, again, it also depends on what API that you're calling, that it wants it in different. I don't know why there isn't consistency here, but this is just kind of the, the world that we need to live in. So we're going to get back this signature here. Now, we do get it back in the slice of bytes. And so if we go back here, um, we're going to do a couple of things with it. Now, I wanted to, at least in this function, just make sure that there's sanity going on, OK? And what's kind of cool here is that the crypto package has this function from ECDSA pub. What it's going to do is, if we look here, extract the bytes for the original public key. What this is going to do for us 
is get back essentially the bytes that represent the public key pair of this private key. Do I have to do this here in signature? No, but I do want to play with the verify signature function, where the verify signature wants to verify that this given public key um, is the pair for the private key that produced that signature, just RS, we don't need V there, um, over that data. Again, I don't necessarily need to do this here, but it gives me kind of a warm and fuzzy that the algorithms are working. Um, this should never fail because I'm taking the private key and asking for its public key pair here, and then I'm just running the verify signature. Like that should never fail because I'm I have the private key in front of me, right? But the only way to absolutely validate, verify the signature in this particular case is to have the actual public key. So do I need to do this? Uh, no, but if it ever fails, I'd start to get really, really nervous. But what's kind of interesting here is I get the public key pair, um, cast it back to the public key. If you see here, this returns a crypto public key but I really know that it's in the ECDSA form. Um, and then this function here, take that public key and it converts it into a set of bytes that allows me to call verify signature. So I'm basically saying with the public key pair and that data and the RS, and that signature remember being produced by the private key up here. In this case, we're just taking RNS, we don't need V. Um, was, is the signature RS valid uh, with that public key? It, that should always be successful. Now, the last thing here is our two. I love these two functions. Say, take the input and convert it to this. And we need this because, again, sometimes we can work with the data as the slice of 65 bytes. Sometimes we need the RSV. I've chosen this API to return our, our VRS in this case. So if we look at our two, again, they're unexported. Here it is. Let's bring that in for what we need right now. You can see here that there's not much going on. We take the slice and we grab the first 32 bytes and then we take the next 32 bytes then we take the last byte. And what's kind of nice here is that the big package has the, um, the set bytes sort of function. The big package is really complicated to work with when you're first learning it um, because it all works on values. And I, you know what? What's kind of interesting is I don't tend to use this um, form, now that I'm looking at this code, to construct. You can do this and construct a big int set to its zero value. I don't know why, but um, a lot of times I like using big.new int. Um, some people don't like that only because you've got to specify the, you know, you got to specify a value. But basically, that's what this is doing anyway, right? And so, honestly, um, I've kind of gravitated towards this syntax for big int. In fact, I'm going to change that here too, because I, 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 I like that syntax better than using the built in. Um, new function. So let's do that. And, and so that, that's the only bummer here. You've got to construct that, that, that int, and then here we can call the set bytes. Now what's interesting again when you start playing with big int, the set bytes will go into this new integer, but it also returns it back out. Um, and that can be really confusing when you start here. Uh, and, so, and so just realize that, that that set bytes is both in this integer that we constructed and it also sends it out on the return. But we need a value to make any sort of API code. There's nothing here is function based. All right, I also named the arguments again for documentation. Now, if you notice something here to two signature values, um, I'm adding this Arden ID to the signature. This is something that both Bitcoin and Ethereum also do. They also do this. Uh, and again, it's another way of them um, creating some uniqueness in their protocol when it comes to signatures. Now, when it comes to Ethereum and Bitcoin, they actually use the ID of 27. 
So if you were to go and look at any signature, let's say up on Etherscan, and you looked at the last byte of any signature, you would see 1B or 1C. And that's telling you that this signature was produced by Bitcoin or say Ethereum. I didn't want to use 27, I used 29. And so anytime we produce a signature, I add 29, so I should see D or E, 1D or 1E e at the end of any of my signatures. And it kind of adds to the protocol. Now, I can't use a V value other than zero or one. So at some point, in order to use the signature, we're gonna have to subtract that number out of the signature. At this point, we're not doing any of that, so I won't bring that in. Um, but now the signature, at least the V value, isn't usable in that current state. It always has to be zero or one. But again, it's a way of strengthening the protocol uh, and making sure people aren't making mistakes. So we'll take a look at that. So now what we do is we've got our, our, our V, R, and S values um, back out. And I like returning the V first, I think, just because it's the one byte, and then the R, S. I don't know why I kind of gravitated to that, even though in the slice it's kind of in this order and I return it back out in an opposite order. I don't know why it just felt better for me. Okay, so we now have a signature function that we can play with here, right? We've got a signature function. So we did already our sign. Now what we could do maybe is display these, these values back out. So maybe I do print line, let's say this is going to be V, there, uh, V, and then we're going to have our R, and these are just big ints here, R, and then this is going to be our S, uh, yep, our S here, S. Now if I run our scratch program this time, okay, you see now what we have is our digital signature in a, a three-part form, and you see V is 30. So what does that mean? It means that the V value actually for this signature was one, it wasn't zero, right? Because V can be either zero or one. And so now anytime we see that number, or we see it in hexadecimal, which is really the way we're gonna end up kind of showing these numbers. Off the top of my head, I don't remember how to change that. Maybe I'll look at it in between this and the next video. Um, but anytime we see that, we know that this is now an Arden-based signature part of our protocol. So that's kind of cool. So what we now have, at least at this point, is the ability to sign something. And again, do we need to do this? Uh, not really. I, that should never, ever, never, never, ever fail. Just gives me a warm and fuzzy. But really the next step now is to pretend that we send this data and this signature that we just produced. Um, we pretend now that we're gonna send that data and the signature over the wire to the node and find a way to make sure the node um, can validate that that was us and only us. Like, how are we gonna do that? This, this becomes super important to, uh, as the next step.